Hello and congratulations, you have officially made it to our very first lecture video of the Building Your Breaking Path Personal Development course by the Nico Spins Training Camp. In today's lecture video, we're going to cover and open a really important conversation, and that's asking, are you a real b-boy? Are you a real b-girl? Are you a real breaker? This is a question that may be easy to answer for some and may come naturally to those people. But for me, this falls within the conversation of things I wish I knew earlier on. And I find that this is a common conversation with even some of the most respected people that I find um, as authoritative figures in the breaking scene. They're constantly asking themselves this. And I think this is an appropriate time to bring this conversation to surface. And I have a list of common frustrations that people here in the group have shared with me. And I'd love uh, to open this up and see where our mind goes. But some common frustrations that I've heard in the scope of am I a real breaker is one, I don't like to battle. I love practicing or I love the commercial industry or I love performing, but I don't like battling. Does that mean I'm not a real girl does that mean I'm not a real b-boy another one is I don't know breaking history hip-hop history but I love like I love the craft of it does that mean I'm not a real b-girl b-boy or breaker a third one that I commonly hear is I don't have power moves or the other side I don't have footwork my style's incomplete I don't think I'm a real b-boy. I don't think I'm a real b-girl. Am I? And they question, right? Another one I often hear and have data is, I don't know if I live that kind of life. What life are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know if I live that kind of life. Who or, whose life are you referring to? The ones that you see on like the videos, the ones that you see doing street shows. What life are you talking about? When I think of these conversations, it sounds a lot like definitions you can find on the internet of imposter syndrome. And this is something that I have struggled with. And if you don't know what imposter syndrome, an internet search says, imposter syndrome is feeling anxious and not experiencing success internally, despite being high performing in external and objective ways. This condition can often result in people feeling like a fraud, a phony, a poser. Some people say a break dancer instead of a b-boy or a b-girl or a breaker. And they continue to doubt their abilities. Imposter syndrome may feel like an inability to realistically assess your competence and skills. Another one is attributing your success to external factors like all the work that you put in training towards these events or that you put in training period, you just devalue it, you invalidate it, right? You berate your performance. It also may feel like fear that you won't live up to expectations. Whose expectations are you talking about, right? Um, overachieving, like you put in so much work into this project, but maybe you did too much, right? You're trying too hard. Another one is just sabotaging your own success um, because of self-doubt, you know, social anxiety, um, setting very challenging goals, and falling disappointed when you fall short. Dude, I resonate with all of these, or I've experienced all of these, and I've come to find out that with all the goals that I've set out for myself, whether it was pursuing the 2024 Paris Olympic Games, whether it was shooting my shot to go for Team Philippines to ultimately find out that there was a WDSF ruling saying that if you don't have your passport within a certain time period throughout the entire qualifying games, then you're ineligible. So whether I was able to get nominated or work my way to get onto Team Philippines and represent for them, as long as that rule stands, then I'm ineligible to play. And that's a rule that's completely out of my control, but then I would beat myself up about it. But it was out of my control, right? And because I fell short 
out of not making it to the Paris Olympic Games, I was so doubtful and hateful of myself that I didn't even recognize that my friends, my family, my support system, that even if I didn't reach that metric that I set for myself, my family and my friends were still congratulating me. They were still proud of me. They were still supporting me. They didn't leave my side and they didn't quit on me. But I was busy hating on myself. And in my near 15 years of breaking, this same scenario even played into when I was reaching some of my other bucket list breaking goals. And that was like competing in Red Bull BC1 2019. It was always one of my goals and bucket list dreams to make it into that competition. And I made it as a finalist in the Los Angeles Cypher. And that level of competitors are so high. I made it to the finals. Two and a half weeks later, I advanced to the USA Nationals. And I climbed to the finals again, right? I trained so hard. And even though I, re- I reached such a high rank at that time, no, I'm still doing it right now, right? I'm, I still struggle with it, right? Even though I still made it to the finals, that's a great thing to celebrate. You're one of the top in the country. But I was so busy hating myself, being critical of my performance. And my family was congratulating me. My friends were congratulating me. And they wanted to celebrate. Even the work and the practices, we were there together. But I was busy being critical of myself that I didn't get to enjoy any of it. I'll never forget those competitions. It was fun being in the moment and exchanging rounds. But I do recognize that. I opted out of having fun. I opted out of, you know, enjoying the moment and being there with my family that were celebrating something and that love me unconditionally no matter what the result is. So if I were to go back in time, I would definitely soak in the moment. But I think what I'm trying to get at is this conversation is so common. Some of the most respected B-boys, B-girls, high performers, successful people, entrepreneurs, nearly everyone has this. So please know that you are not alone. And some characters in this program and people that have signed up and registered for, yeah, this course, I have students that are still in elementary school that are viewing this video. They have extracurricular activities. They have other sports. They have other hobbies and passions. And they have school, right? But they can't do it without having that little groove and that little bounce that breaking has to offer, right? I have adult friends that run their own businesses or building their own financial empires, but they still sprinkle hip hop elements in their branding while they're working 12 to 15 hour days, right? I have friends and family that work in corporate or government jobs that can't wait to get to their evening practice. Like they just can't wait. As soon as their nine to five hits, boom, they're gonna zoom straight to practice and get it in. I have friends that have kids and families. They have responsibilities that consume the near 24 hours per day, they're, they'll be exhausted and they will still make it to practice. Regardless, it's resilient. And I have peers that whatever life venture or obligation they've signed themselves up for or that they are in, they'll want to get back into breaking and hip-hop culture so bad, but they'll still, as best as they can, listen and consume to hip-hop music listen to breakbeats, watch battles in any opportunity they can get. And I know for these people that if these obligations and responsibilities did not consume a majority of their day, they'd probably be breaking. And yet, throughout this list, they still disqualify themselves as B-boys, as B-girls, as breakers. When hip-hop is coursing through their heart, their soul, their veins... They disqualify themselves when they got it in them. And so I'll leave this statement here. The only battle in this scenario is the battle within ourselves. To what term is the perception of others' opinions more valuable than yours? In other words, for those who struggle with this, which is nearly everyone, 
why are you valuing other opinions over your own? And sometimes those others' opinions may not even exist, right? Like really, who are your haters? Yes, there's some people that are critical, some people that are more sad and less fortunate, so they'll project on you when you do want to pursue something that you want. But who's really stopping you from going to practice? Who's really stopping you from going to session? Who's really stopping you? Is it them? Is it the scenario? Or is it you? I mean, we can give you all of the foundational literature. I can give you the list of books to read. We can give you the movies to watch and documentaries to view. We can give you the list of jams and competitions to attend and immerse yourself to start forming that opinion and get a solidified idea of what the break life is like and see it from other people. We can give you the structure on what it's like to create your first street show and you can hit in your local downtown area. You can hit on your local tourist area. Um, We can give you instructional power move for footwork videos. But this conversation really goes back to you because you have the heart of a breaker. The greats of breaking, they've always preached to us to learn and practice your foundation, to focus and nurture your originality, to implement your flavor. You know, we all have this characteristic and trait of each one teach one. You do want to pass it on because it's fun for us. So we got to get the next person to enjoy it with us, right? Invite the other person to session. Teach that next student. Teach that next person. Share it with your cousin. Share it with your best friend. And it's said that the breaker that wins the battle is the one that knows themselves best. I'll say that again. It's said that the breaker that wins the battle is the one who knows themselves best. This all translates into becoming the best version of you. That's how I interpret it. I know and I'm confident that you can create a legitimate list of reasons on why breaking means so much to you. That's going to be part of the homework. And this video and this program isn't to just gas you up and give you hope. Hope's not a strategy. It's not. And I'm not here to give you a single move tutorial. You can find that elsewhere on the internet and that's totally fine. But I'm here to provide a safe space for you to assess, understand, and believe in your passion in breaking. So your homework for this video, after this video, is going to be to write to yourself. Number one, what is breaking to you? And number two, why do you keep it there? So again, number one, your homework is to write to yourself, what is breaking to you? And number two, why do you keep it there? If you feel comfortable enough, you can share it with me and I'd love to see what you write. But our next video, that one's gonna include a laboratory session and that one's gonna be on style development. So we can't really get into that one unless you fulfill this one and you ask this conversation or you open this conversation for yourself. All right, guys, that is video number one of the Build Your Breaking Path personal development course through breaking by the Nico Spins Training Club. Uh, Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you soon. Peace.